remember that old Sheets commercial when they were trying to get beer in the convenience stores? They had a girl who was on a tour of a museum, and they're showing all of these old relics, all of these interesting things, archaic things, things that are old school that do not exist anymore. And then she comes across this convenience store, and she's like, what is this? This is so bizarre. And, and the guy who's with her, or the instructor, or wh whichever, he, he tells her that that's a convenience store that doesn't sell alcohol. And she's just like, wow, can you imagine that people used to live like that? Pennsylvania is such a backward state. We are just so we're we're just living in the past all the time. We refuse to move forward. We refuse to progress. And it just blows my mind how complacent we are to just live in this this commonwealth of just like these old laws, like like the liquor laws, which finally have had a little bit of reform. I don't think they're in all of the sheets yet, but at least they are on their way. They're in some of the get-gos, and they are going to be moving alcohol into grocery stores. They've already started it in Giant Eagles in this area. Weigman's out on the other side of the state. So things are progressing. But, again, Pennsylvania, stuck in the Stone Ages. And we're going to talk about that at the to today on the beginning of the show, and we're going to probably bring it up a few times you are listening to Brian Crawford on River Talk. This is the River's Edge Radio Network. I am Pittsburgh's moral compass, setting you straight so that way you can go through your day in peace. It's going to be a fun show. We've got some interesting things going on today. I, uh, I want to talk about this real ID thing. Oh, we're going to have uh, Alex Clemens on, by the way. She is the co-host and the producer of the Mike Sassage Show. And we're going to talk to her about bar etiquette. And uh, this has to do with an experience I had in the uh, past couple days. And we're going to talk about that. No, I'm not going to list the name of the bar because there are some people there who I like and I respect that work there. But it's an interesting situation. And, and I want to hear her thoughts because if you listen to the Mike Sasson show, you'll know that Alex likes to go out and have a good time at bars. She actually has a segment on the show, which is Bar Thoughts with Alex. So, I want to get her thoughts. Maybe she'll be sitting in a bar as she calls in. And we can get Bar Thoughts with Alex about the bar here on the River's Edge. We have Matt Geica in a few minutes. He's going to be coming in studio to give us our sports update, which should be interesting after the Steelers' terrible, terrible loss to Miami just yesterday so we're going to talk to matt about that and we're also going to uh, give you another weird news story this is kind of in the political realm of things and uh, again you're listening to the river's edge radio network pittsburgh's voice for local music and it's powered by njl web tech honest practical and affordable go to njlwebtech.com for all of your web servicing needs and njl web tech actually they helped spearhead the launch of this network in a way i was doing college radio and i decided that i could start my own podcast actually they, they kind of convinced me uh, i was talking to nick the proprietor of ngl web tech and i was talking to his family and they said you know you need to start your own online thing you need to get that going and i'm like well i got this college radio thing going and they said no you got to do this you got to do this well Eventually, I decided to jump in and do it, and NGL Web Tech got the website going, and they did a great job, so check them out. But Pennsylvania is back in the Stone Ages again, and many of you may not realize this, but because of the Commonwealth's incompetence, you may now be required to get a passport. That's right, a passport. Over $100 for a passport. You gotta go to... You gotta go to the uh, the post office and make an appointment and go back and, and do all of that stuff. It, it's just, and it's great if you're going overseas, but to go from state to state, yes, you may need a passport to fly to a different state. Why do you ask? Because back in 2005, the federal government 
issued a, an act. They put it into law. It's called the or it's a it's a mandate. It's called the Real ID Act of 2005. What is that, do you ask? Well, after 9-11, the federal government decided that they needed a better, a better ID to make sure that people were legitimate. So they came out with this Real ID Act of 2005, and it had some requirements that the state or the commonwealth, depending on where you live, would be required to put on the ID, if the ID, if they wanted the ID to be legitimized as a an official federal government photo ID. Well, there were only five states who have failed to do so. Guess who's one of them? Pennsylvania. That's right. Pennsylvania. Screwing the citizens again. So, why do you ask would they not want to go forward with this, with qualifying our IDs for this Real ID Act. Well, the reason right now, well, there's two reasons right now. Uh, one reason is cost. They're saying that they're estimating it would take, it would cost about $250 million to $300 million to replace the IDs. That's a lot of money. The state has a budgetary issue. And you may be sitting there thinking at home, well, okay, yeah, we don't have a way to pay these teacher pensions. We don't have any solutions to any real solutions, any viable solutions to get our our commonwealth into the green. Their grand plan was to get the casinos to buy liquor licenses to be 24 hours a day. That fell on its face. They wanted them to pay way too much to get these liquor licenses and all of the casinos, all of them. Every casino in the state had decided that the price was too high. It was too steep. They aren't going to go through with it. No special liquor license. So all of that money, which they were expecting to get, kaput, gonzo, didn't uh, didn't happen. So we still have budgetary issues. So uh, why am I bringing this up? Because this Real ID Act was enacted in 2005. 2005. They've had 10 years, 10 years to make this happen. So maybe it wouldn't have cost... $250 million to $300 million to replace all of these IDs if they just would have made it a normal process of renewing your driver's license. Oh, your driver's license is up? Well, now you've got to enroll into this new driver's license. We'll give you a new license. When we're giving it to you anyways, when you already have to pay to get a new driver's license, we'll just add on the extra costs, do what we have to do to make sure that our driver's licenses, by the time... 2015 rolls around are secure or yeah they're available 2016 by the time this time comes around these things are available and you have them in your hands and now you could fly to florida without a passport without a passport can you imagine a passport to drive to fly to florida it's crazy imagine going to a job interview and they require two forms of identification and now your driver's license doesn't work. So if you're like President Obama and you misplaced your birth certificate, then you got to order a new birth certificate and wait for that to come in. And at that point, you may have already lost the job to someone else. Um, it just doesn't make sense. And there's a Republican, Mike Fulmer of Lebanon, who was the chief sponsor of a bill that was passed in Pennsylvania. And this is the second reason why our driver's licenses are no longer adequate. There's a bill called the Real ID Non-Participation Act. And they feel that this Real ID Act is an infringement of our rights as citizens. And it's giving too much power to the federal government. Well, you could still always change it later. I mean, just, just make it work. Do what's best for your citizens. Allow your citizens to be able to fly across the country without a special ID. And there are talks that they will be bringing out other federal IDs, but you're still going to have to pay for that. So now you've got to juggle two IDs with you in order to, f to fly. It just doesn't make any sense. I don't get it. Um, it it's It blows my mind. <sighs> Pennsylvania is a state just living in the past. It's just really aggravating. It's it's just so frustrating to live here. The other five, uh, other four states, for your information, if you want to know, 
They are Kentucky, they are Maine, they are Oklahoma, and South Carolina. So uh, that's who we're in with, and those are the states that have opted out of participating in this real ID program. And I mean, it's only five states, so it's not like it's not like the states missed it. It's not like it was like a surprise. Woo! They've known about it for ten years. Every other state's gotten on board. Pennsylvania just needs to shape up. Ugh. We're going to have Matt Geica up next. He's going to give you your sports update. So uh, good stuff from Matt. Looking forward to that. And then we have Alex on a little bit later. She's going to talk to us about bar etiquette. So uh, I want to get your calls on that. I want to get your tweets at RiverTalkPGH or 412-4072-PGH. That's 412 407 27 Four, four. And I, I guess you can message me on Facebook, too. We've got the Facebook page up. I got the chat up here. Let's see if we got anything here. Da, 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 da. Nothing yet, but uh, feel free to also message me there. I can read your comments there as well. I'm Brian Crawford. You're listening to Pittsburgh's Voice for Local Music. Up next, Matt Geica. This is The River's Edge. Come on, go! It's green! Come on! Go! God damn it, Brian. You need to calm down yeah, on the I'm road rage. I'm sick of these people, these assholes. The road rage, man. you got to calm down on the road rage. Well, I'm on where or I want to get to where we're going. We have a lot of great stuff coming up. We're going to the Falling Water... Bicycle Heaven. The Mattress Factory. The knob. Trundle Manor. All right, which way do I go? Which uh, way do I go? Come on, right, come on. Right, Too late now. Right, come on. Well, too late now, you know, i got to keep going. I'm not going to sit oh, here like some asshole. Oh, come on, man. All right, you're listening to The Culture Cruise. You can find us at riversedgepgh.com. Your local Pittsburgh area museum podcast. Yes, riversedgepgh.com, and come take a ride with us. All right, we're waiting on Mac Geica, so uh, we should be hearing back from him soon. But don't forget, a new Culture Cruise is available. And uh, this time, Randy and I took a trip to the Scare House. And we actually got complimentary tickets thanks to Katie Dudas, who uh, you can hear every Thursday morning here at RiversEdgePGH.com, 8 a.m. right after Funny Money with Awesome Cast. And Katie gave us two more tickets! And guess what? We're giving them away! That's right, you have the opportunity and the chance, the, t the two tickets, they're RIP tickets, they're still available. All you have to do is listen to the Culture Cruise and find the catchphrase. If you could find the catchphrase and tweet me at RiverTalkPGH, you and your first, the two RIP tickets are yours. So do not miss out on that opportunity. Uh, I wanted to give a few birthday shoutouts, actually. Do 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 do. Happy birthday, Frank of the Roof. It's a uh, band that we have here on the Rivers Edge Radio Network. Frank actually played. For me, at my 100th show at Needs Hotel, great guy, a uh, big fan of the show and the network. Happy birthday to Sean Logue. He is our resident political attorney. He's been on the show a few times to kind of give us the legal angle of what's going on in politics. And a really special happy birthday to the woman who gave us this cowbell, who helped us get our studio space and has been extremely supportive of the River's Edge since before we were even a network. I remember when I messaged this uh, awesome, awesome lady when I first started this random podcast in a closet in an attic down the street, and she was so supportive that she had uh, helped us get this space. Uh, she's just a really awesome lady, Tina Walker of the Millville Community Development Corporation, so thank you to Tina as well. We do have Matt with us right here. Uh, Matt, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm here. Off to an awesome start to the week. Got my workout in. I'm going nice. to talk to you. So Awesome. I wow. mean, you can't get any better up. than that, right? I mean, that's... I'm a simple man of simple tastes, Brian. So that that's all that I need, really. That's all that you need, exactly. <laughs> so um, it's been an interesting... Uh, yesterday was an interesting day. Yesterday was kind of a disaster, wasn't it? Sure it was. If you are a Steelers fan, which I'm assuming a lot of people who listen to this are. And it's funny. It's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy because so many of us were talking <laughs> talking about how <clears throat> excuse me 
the last five years, the Steelers were 5-10 and ten against losing teams on the road under Mike Tomlin, of course. Um, and that continues on. They even uh, one up themselves in a way because they were favored, I believe, by double digits and ended up losing by 15. So that, that doesn't happen too often <laughs> in the NFL. Usually the guys who make the lines in Vegas are, are pretty smart guys and gals, and, and the Steelers proved them <laughs> wrong on Sunday, but they proved all of us right who have seen them do this over and over again. And I understand that in the NFL, we put so much significance on 16 games and a lot of things can happen, but it is a definite pattern and one that's difficult to figure out. Ben got hurt again, and now he's not going to be playing for New England. And it just seems like there's somewhat of a curse on this team playing New England. Uh, this is the year that I thought the Steelers could really beat them. I thought, you know, they had the team in place that they could really uh, challenge New England, and now they're out Ben Roethlisberger, and now my opinion has changed. <laughs> well, it's funny because in that all-time series, typically the home team has done really well. The Patriots haven't come in here and win that o and won that often. You go back to the 04 and 01 championship games, of course, but in recent years especially, it's been a very home-heavy series. If the Steelers go up there, the Patriots are going to win, and, and vice versa. Hmm. So that's why I felt also good about it. The, the Steelers tend to play better at, at home, which most teams do, but there is, I think, even more of a, of a home field advantage with this squad. And again, it, it's kind of a Mike Tomlin thing. They get up for the big games, and especially the ones at Heinz Field. So even considering the result yesterday before we found out that Ben Roethlisberger had the torn meniscus I was relatively bullish on their chances to at least make it a game next week but without a, an elite quarterback without your most important player my feelings have certainly changed now how long does someone usually stay out with a meniscus injury is, is there like a, a general timetable for something like that well, it depends on the nature of the injury. The Steelers haven't announced anything, and the injury itself didn't look that bad. Roethlisberger tripped himself, and that's how he okay. he injured himself. So a bit of a clumsy move there, and uh, not one that, that's pretty common for, for him because he, he scrambles quite a bit. So uh, it's not that he doesn't have experience moving around in the pocket. And he was able to complete the game, which I think indicates that the, the meniscus didn't come out from underneath the kneecap. The meniscus is what shocks the impact of the the femur the the upper leg bone uh, going into the knee joint it's kind of like a cushion under the under the kneecap so a lot of times it can fray and it can even pop loose which is extremely painful for the athlete it didn't look like ben had that going on so it could just be a, a general uh, or a, a more minor tear than some of the the more difficult meniscus injuries we've seen in the past so there's a chance that he just misses New England. Then, of course, there's the bye week. Mm -hmm. So that gives That's true. A, a great deal of an advantage for a guy recovering from this type of an injury. There's a decent chance he's back on the field. I want to say they play at Baltimore. They do play the Ravens in that first game of November after the bye. I think it's at Baltimore. So I wouldn't bet against him being back for that. But this game is so important against the Patriots because, again, I talk about the home field advantage and how much it's mattered in that all-time series. In the playoffs especially, the Steelers have gone on the road and have played some competitive games in the playoffs lately, but they have not pulled out the win. And we saw that again in Denver and how important home field can be. So this one was shaping up as perhaps the, the decider in home field advantage. And now the Steelers are certainly hamstrung. The NFL ratings have been slipping. Interesting, huh? It is. Do you think that it could go the way of boxing? Do you think this is the <laughs> early early stages of that? Maybe 50 years down the road. I mean, not not immediately, obviously. Right. Th there didn't seem to be a ceiling on NFL ratings for a long time, which defied conventional wisdom. That's typically a, a property, an entertainment property, doesn't exponentially rise forever and ever and ever. And for a long time, for 15, 20 years, 30 years even, the NFL was that. And this is the first real roadblock that it's run into. And... I've seen some people in the NFL office, I forget who talked about it, whether it was Roger Goodell or, or someone in, in PR for, for the league, said that, well, the election's going on. It's a very contentious election. I don't think a hardcore football fan is going to turn off football because the election is interesting. It's not like you can't catch up on the news anyway after the fact. And you look back to the 12 election, in fact, we do have a uh, comparable, if you will, and ratings were down maybe 2% uh, yeah. that year. This is 15%, especially in prime time. 
So people are still watching that Sunday afternoon time frame, 1 o'clock, 4 o'clock. It's the Monday and Sunday night games, which typically have done boffo ratings that are, are falling off. So I've talked about it on my show, Brian. There's no guarantee that professional sports are going to be popular forever. And there's so many more options. Everything's on demand nowadays, too. If you want to catch up on a show, maybe Sunday night or Monday night's the time to do it. So well, uh, that actually lends to uh, your argument uh, against the politics being a big deal as well, because like the other day, it was, the debate was on Monday. I wanted to go to the Acoustic Cafe mm -hmm. down the road here, so I skipped the debate and I watched it on YouTube. The entire debate right. is available yeah. on YouTube, and it's not like it's not like football where or, or any sport where you know if you don't watch it live, it loses kind of uh, some of its impact. A presidential mm -hmm. debate, I mean, a debate's a debate. Yeah, you might hear a little bit afterwards, but yeah. you really got to hear it for yourself. Well, that's why these live sports rights continue to be lucrative for networks. Or I'm sorry, for leagues. Networks pay the type of money that they do because people don't TiVo. They don't DVR these, yeah. these, uh, these games. They want to watch them live. They want to experience it with their friends live. And that's not something that goes on even for a presidential debate, which does have that immediate cachet. But it, it's more like a TV show compared mm -hmm. to, a, to a live event. So... Live events continue to be where it's at, ratings-wise, but this the, the football drop-off, I think, has a lot of people confused right now. I, I think, I really strongly feel we are going to see a change over the next 50 years or so, as the given number that you mentioned. And I think a lot of it is all of these little things coming together with the concussion issue and with just the, the criminality aspect that plagues the league. Uh, and I know the statistics say it's smaller than the general population, but the general it population is, is not – it's not made up of millionaires for them by at large. So I, I don't think that that's a fair well, comparison. Well, also the average Joe or Jane isn't on TV every week either. So True. Right. Uh, that, that type of uh, justification never really hit home for me. And really, football players have been getting in trouble since the 1920s, so it's not like it's some new thing. Uh, but if you do get in trouble, and there are more football players than there are in any other league because there's 53-man rosters yeah. compared to basketball, hockey, or baseball. So just by the numbers alone, you're going to have more football players in trouble than other sports. And we love the gossip now. We love to, to chat this stuff up. So but I, uh, I guess that type of thing is playing against football. True, but I, I think you, you see this decline in youth football as well. Oh, yeah, and as far I as think concussions that, that, go and all that. Yes, and I think that 50 years down the road – will play into uh, maybe a slowing down of, of the NFL because you aren't having these kids growing up with it. Uh, like kids used to grow up with baseball, and they still do in some places, but kids for, for a while were growing up with football, even if it was just like the, the little kids league or whatever. And I think as people kind of get away from that, as, you see, as you've seen the popularity with the Penguins rise, for example, with the, with the money that they've spent in youth programs and things like that, I think you're probably going to see the, the opposite effect in the NFL, where as kids aren't playing it as much, their interests may not be as, as heavily there as, as it would have been at one time. I mean, that, that's just a speculation on my part. Well, I think your baseball comparison is very apt because participation has been down uh, among youth for 20, 30 years. And it's tough to be, it's tougher to be interested in the sport if you don't play it. And uh, when you look at football, I certainly wouldn't let my children play football. Mm -hmm. And uh, my wife and I are about to have our first kid at some point in the very Ooh. near future. Uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I'm very nervous <laughs> about that. But one thing we have talked about is we're not going to let uh, him or her play football. And it's, it's just a self-preservation thing. Why would you play that sport when there are other ways to, to be active, to stay in shape, to be outside, to develop social skills without putting your brain in danger? So I think it's an easy choice, honestly. And, and the grassroots, and you speak of the Penguins, too, and I talked about this with Alan Saunders on my show this week. Which his new site sounds awesome. Yeah, it's a great idea. I'm very huh? excited about so, that. So, um, yeah, he put his neck out there. And, and we were talking about grassroots hockey and, and some of the things he's covering for the site, which is berghockey.com. That's how you get that organic interest that's not related to how good is the team, how attractive um, are the stars, it doesn't really matter. If you play the sport, you're more likely to be a fan of the sport. And that's how you make lifelong fans is that. And I think football has an issue in that way, uh, it, much in the same way that baseball does. Of course, just different uh, problems there for kids playing baseball. Most of them think it's boring. 
but for football, it's not boring. It's 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 just uh, too much risk, too much liability when it comes to getting your uh, your head rattled. So I think that honestly, uh, I, I know this isn't hap- the NFL is not going to enjoy me saying this, but I think it, it could be a good thing just for our society because because the, the NFL for a while, and I, I think it's finally starting to taper down. It almost had like that cult like feel to it it was almost too popular too big to fail sounds like yeah, the banks leading exactly into, uh, and, and, the 08 crash and you know where major league <laughs> baseball is now it's still very popular it's still uh sure it's still very profitable so it's still a, a definitely Extremely. a great industry but it doesn't have that that it, those clutches on society so i think you know if we can get to that level with football i think that would be a great thing where people can enjoy the game it's still profitable but it doesn't have maybe quite the impact on society that it, maybe it's a little overreaching. Yeah, times. I think it, it has ranged over into obsession. Yeah. And football has that appeal to casual fans because you only have to follow once a week for three hours if you really just want to watch the game. And uh, to its credit, the NFL has marketed it that way, and, and it's worked. Uh, but there are definitely more uh, diehards, I would say, that, than casuals, and, and – I'm all about balance, and uh, that's why you know I think even covering baseball this year was a challenge for me mentally because it just felt like every day, and it's such a such a grind, and it's like you, you need time off, you need time to get away, and um, the way that that football was rising in its popularity, it just from a human standpoint, it it, it it like you said a cult like following, it was almost too much, and people were just defending football, um, you know rapidly no matter what the the science was saying about concussions or whatever and i think finally some rationality has taken over and and i don't know if if this is going to continue on a downward trend or it's just going to flatten out but i'm all in favor of uh of football not getting too big because again like i said i joked about too big to fail but uh when it becomes too big and people care about it too much then they stop looking at it critically and looking for ways for it to be safer or to improve or, or what have you yeah Anything else going on in the world of sports that we need to touch base on before we move along? Well, sure. I I still love watching baseball, so the the playoffs continue on. Yeah. And and I I said this on the final word last night on Channel Eleven. But if you're a Pirates fan, you can't be too excited about this National League Championship Series because you have two of the three biggest markets with the most resources in the NLCS, and these are the two teams, the Cubs and the Dodgers. I'm talking about that you're going to have to get through if you want to do anything if you're the Pirates, and particularly the Cubs in your own division. And not only do these teams have the most resources now, but they also have two of the smartest dudes in the business running them. Theo Epstein, formerly of the Red Sox, now running the Cubs in his second or third year, third year uh, doing that. And uh, Andrew Friedman, who used to make uh, chicken salad out of chicken crap down in Tampa Bay (laughs) for the Rays, now he's got the Dodgers' riches at his disposal and I don't see these two teams loosening their grip anytime soon on the NL. So while I'm enjoying the competition, I think these are definitely the two best teams left on the NL side. It's uh, It's got to be discouraging. And even with the, the new collective bargaining agreement being negotiated as we speak, uh, there's no motivation for some of these owners like your Bob Nuttings who are making a lot of money based on the national popularity of baseball and, and uh, advanced media and all that to, to go for or to drive for any kind of significant change or a salary cap so it's just more of the same it's sad to say i like watching the baseball just for the pure enjoyment of it but uh you wonder how many times we're going to see this type of a matchup in the playoffs between these two teams yeah it's exciting i'm looking forward to keeping up with that the penguins are doing well obviously as well two and oh yeah good start with that good uh, to see the uh the flower play well i'm, I'm a flower fan and i am too yeah I'm, I'm happy to see him remind people that yeah he's still a pretty good goalie too yeah and i i I feel bad for him last year. I mean, uh, Matt Murray played great and, and not taking anything away from him, but my God, they would never be anywhere. They wouldn't have been anywhere near the playoffs without Marc-Andre Fleury earlier that sure. season. And, and it was just a, an unfortunate circumstance that, that he wasn't there at the beginning of the playoffs. And I mean, kudos to, to Matt Murray for, for doing what he did, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, you just got to feel bad for the guy. Well, you, you understand, I think all of us do, that it is a business and you're going to yeah. play the guy who's playing well. And, and Mark andre wasn't ready to go for quite a bit of, of the playoffs last year due to a concussion problem that he had. Uh, but from a, from a human standpoint, from an emotional standpoint, I, I can't detach myself from that completely. No. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, what he's done for the team, and you mentioned it, they were playing 
poorly last season at the start of the year, and he was a big reason why they were able to, to grind out some wins and get some points when they needed to to at least stay within touch of the playoff field. And, and beyond that, he, he's just a, a quality individual, um, a good guy in the community, and he was there from uh, from the start when, when they were terrible, and uh, there is a certain amount of, I think, emotional um, equity you, you build up when – you're there at the start, and then you, you take part in, in the franchise's rise back into uh, championship relevance. Now, Matt, do you have a passport? I, I heard you uh, were going to be talking about this. I do. You do? So and, you're safe. Okay. Right, but it's just another pain to, to bring that along when you're traveling, right? Yeah. I don't well. understand what the heck happened with the state of Pennsylvania, that they fell behind here, or they're just not... Oh, well, they actually passed a law, and the law is it's it's called the... Real ID Non Participation Act. Yeah. So they've made a, a law that they're not going to participate with this. Just uh, they 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 have a bunch of bullshit reasons, but really it's they're just screwing over the taxpayer. And now is it a state's rights thing? Like who? who that's put, what it is. Who put yeah. This through the state house. That's or the state congress. I mean. Uh, it's it's uh Mike Fulmer, okay. a Republican in Lebanon. So hit up his office and hmm. tell him that you're pissed off because i mean that's just like so stupid like what i have to now yeah. yeah now i gotta buy a passport i don't have a passport so now i need one i understand the skepticism against a national id and i know people getting squeamish about that but, but you already have one with your social security card right and your yeah birth it's certificate not like it's and, something new no. I mean, we are all one country despite what we may <laughs> yeah i mean i'm all <laughs> we for may see uh, in the uh, the voting coming up here, it's almost like we're two different countries at this point. But <laughs> I'm a big states' rights guy, but you know, common sense. Mm -hmm. You know, so all right, Matt, appreciate it as always. Up next, we're gonna bring in Alex Clemens, and we're gonna talk about barroom etiquette, and we're gonna move the weird news to the end of the program. So stay tuned for that as well. You're listening to the River's Edge. It's headquartered in. Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. There's probably like zero people up there. I was on a cruise with one a guy from Alberta, and he had like never been out of Alberta before in his life. Yeah. And he was like, uh, he's like, you know when the oil freezes in your car? And I'm like, no. no. <laughs> hey, Money Banks, tune into Funny Money at 7 a.m. Thursdays. Did you hear Tom? He said 7 a.m. Tune in. So Tony says on Facebook that he has lived all over the country, and Pennsylvania is by far the most old-fashioned and backward state that he has ever seen. Yeah, Tony, I mean, I haven't lived all over the country, but uh, my God, you could just read the internet and you could, you could figure that out. It's, it's, it's insane. It's absolutely insane, and our liquor laws are insane as well, um, but we're going to kind of talk about liquor in a way we're going to talk about bar etiquette with alex clemens of the mike sasson show alex how are you today i am doing wonderfully brian how are you i'm doing well i, I was thinking last night well i, I was uh, over the last couple days i had a, a bad experience at the bar and i thought you know who would like to talk about this alex would and i figured you might have some <laughs> interesting insight into this so um yes. so here's what happened okay I go to the bar, and I'm not going to say which bar because I don't want to badmouth – I don't want to cause any issues because I, I do like a lot of the people here uh, at okay. this bar. So, But I'm, I'm just going to say what happened. I go, and I'm having a good time, and it's after work. So it's in the afternoon, but for me, that's like my like late at night. So right. I'm a little, you know, a little tipsy. I've been drinking a, a little bit, <laughs> and I get to the bar, and I'm talking about my sworn enemy, the cyclists of Pittsburgh – and I'm pretty animated. I, you know, I'm, I'm going yeah. on about, you know, how, you know, they need to use the goddamn bike lanes and this and that and, and yada, yada, yada. I'm going on. And, you know, I'm at a bar. So I am swearing a little bit. And this guy gets all pissy. He's like, there's women here at the bar. And I'm thinking. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, women there's, can't hear swearing? That's what I'm, th I'm thinking. I'm like, they're not children. They're women. They're adults. Like, it's a bar. So. Then the bartender, I guess because this guy is like – well, first off, then I also like shooed my hand at him like he's a peasant because that's what I do. See, when people piss me <laughs> off, I get very demeaning. Exactly and, what you should do. Yes. Yeah, so like I like waved him off, like shooed him away, and then – and I didn't even respond to him. And then he said something else, and then the bartender was kind of like, oh, you know, come on. Just like cool it down a little bit. And I'm thinking, I'm not doing anything wrong. A am, I, am I crazy? Was I doing anything wrong by swearing at a bar? Absolutely not. I mean, what 
where else do you go to swear? That's that's the point that's, of a bar. That's my you thoughts. You need to go there to relax. That's my thoughts exactly. I thought, you know, this is a bar. This is an adult setting. And, uh, you know, it's not a place for children, even though some parents bring their kids to bars, which yeah. boils my blood. But, uh, you know... <laughs> it's a bar. It's the place. There's there certain places that you go and language is acceptable. Things are acceptable. And in my opinion, I thought that I was completely fine. And then this guy, you know, said something like, Oh, wave your face at my, you know, your hand at me again. So of course, as I left, I, you know, I said, Hey, by the way, and I shoot him off again, just to kind of rub it I in mean, his face. But I can understand where the bartender is coming from just because like, you don't want to fight early exactly. in the afternoon like that would be the shittiest thing for the bartender but that's, and that's why exactly I just... where you're supposed to swear you should go to a bar because you have to cool off it doesn't mean you should be like you know flipping chairs around and like no, no. letting off steam like that but swearing is part of our nature i think that really the bar and in my car is where i swear the most in my life yeah exactly oh the car my goodness i'm i'm always swearing exactly. in, the bar, in the car <laughs> because no one hears you there yeah well not only that but you have to deal with the cyclists that I already mentioned, you got to deal with pedestrians, you got to deal with other people who think they could drive. You have to deal with all of these factors all coming at you all together, and, and it's a disaster. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, just... alcohol kind of does that to you, right? Yeah, alcohol kind of like loosens you up a little bit, it gets you moving. So, I, I don't know. I just, I thought the guy was out of line, I thought he was crazy, and I'm thinking like there were some women there, and I'm thinking like. God, they must feel like, you know, second-class citizens, like they need to be babied or something if, you know, heaven forbid right? someone swears in front of them. I mean... I mean, who goes... Well, first of all, if you don't want to hear that, why are you at a bar in the afternoon? Yes! Like, <laughs> you don't expect that going to the bar in the afternoon? Because he's an old drunk. I'm there because I'm there after work. He's a retired old asshole. So, yeah. I, I mean... Yeah, I would be pissed off if I was one of those women. I would I would start swearing to him. Yeah, like, right? <laughs> What do you mean? I can't swear either? Yeah, exactly. One, one more thing like, that I can do? It blew my mind. I'm just like, wow. So. No, I agree uh, with you, Brian. All right, good. I thought I was on the right page. So what is proper bar etiquette? What is too far? Oh, I would say, like, I, I mean, to me, the thing that I hate most about bars is anyone getting, like, too rowdy with other people. You know what yes. I mean? Like, if you are impeding on someone else's bar experience then to me, that makes me angry. Like, if you are, you know, starting a fight or look like you're about to start a fight or, you know, something like that. Or, I mean, obviously, like, when I go to the bar a lot, I'm seeing stand-up comedy. Yes. And the people who are constantly, like, heckling them and stuff, it's just, it gets annoying. Just don't impede on other people's stuff. Do whatever you want. Enjoy the bar by yourself. But when you get, when you start affecting other people's bar experiences, then that starts to anger me. But you, you were not doing that. You were simply letting off steam and no, well, actually, I was just like having anyone fun. else does at the bar. I wasn't even angry. I was actually having a good time. You know, it's like something that gets right. my blood pumping when I get to to put those cyclists in their place. So exactly, yeah, I was I was enjoying it, and I was you know talking with a friend. We were there was a few of us there. Um, but speaking of comedy, I do have to to do a quick plug real quick. Uh, Still City Comedy Tour has an event on October twenty second. At 7 p.m., Mike Wysocki, Chuck Krieger, and friend of this program, Brad Ryan, will be there. $30 tickets, and uh, this actually benefits uh, the Animal Society. It benefits uh, – pa you can actually email – it says uh, pawsacrosspittsburgh.com. If I sound like I'm a little unorganized, it's because I got this message in the middle of the <laughs> show. And it's going to be held at uh, Paintertown Volunteer Fire Department, which is out my way. So uh, definitely check that out. But – yeah, and another thing that really blows my mind is um, people who play, like, Nickelback on the jukebox. Like, to me, that's too oh. far. Like, that's bad <laughs> bar etiquette. I hate those people. Yeah. Like, that— I don't know how those people actually survive at the bar because anytime you do that, I feel like everyone looks at you with hatred. Like, I... how are you able to sit there after you do that? Yeah, I almost got into a fight at uh, Rivertown once over that. <laughs> I'm at Rivertown, and— you know, I'm sitting there, I'm having a good time, and I'm playing music from my phone on the, the jukebox, and then all of a sudden, Nickelback comes on. And yeah. I'm like, who in the hell played Nickelback? And some guys like I did. And I'm like, you have terrible taste in music. So we start, like, going back and forth, and he starts playing Nickelback more and more, and it's, like, getting heated. And I had to, like, remove myself from the bar because it was, like, really 
really getting pretty intense. But it's just like you don't keep playing Nickelback over and over at the bar. Like one time is, is way too many. Right. Like granted, I, I probably t- play some songs that other people don't enjoy, but there's at least like a couple people at the bar that will enjoy them. And I'm OK with that. But no one no one enjoys Nickelback. No, nobody except does. Except that one guy. <laughs> except that one guy. And I will say this is bad bar etiquette on my part. But if I'm playing the jukebox and somebody doesn't like what I'm playing, then I'll play something that's, like, really, really bad. I know everyone's going to hate. So if somebody bitches, like, vocally bitches... <laughs> yeah, that bitches, sounds like really shitty bar etiquette. Yeah, that's really bad bar etiquette. But it's, like, it's it's great because I can do it from my phone, so then they still don't even know it's me, so I'm just kind of, like, snickering in the corner. But, right. Uh, you know, but, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, just, like, you know, keep your mouth shut, let me do whatever I want to do, and then... Everyone right. Will be good. I mean, that's what you get. I barely even listen to the music at the bar unless I'm playing it. So, or unless it's like an amazing song. We were at Sidelines the other day, and the jukebox was on, and the level was 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 great. Because a lot of times you go into a bar, and the bartender has the jukebox like all the way maxed out, and you're trying to have a conversation. The jukebox right. comes on, and then you can't even hear yourself think, let alone the person next to you. And to me, that's too loud. Like I, I became like very anti jukebox for a very long time. Yeah. And, until I started going to a few places where they, you know, they dialed it back just a little bit. You could still hear it, still great, but not overwhelming. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I don't like, I particularly don't like screaming to people at bars. Yeah. <laughs> I would just prefer like, not to do that. It, it's not enjoyable. And like, I don't know, like, I'm not a, a, a clubber. I, are you a clubber? Do you like to go to clubs? <laughs> I am not a clubber. You're no. not a clubber. Okay. Yeah, I'm not either. So, like, when I go out, I want to just go out and have a conversation. Like, to me, that is the way to do it that's you know right. that's what i enjoy so yeah i like my my shitty dive bars i like to go there and have a conversation and have a conversation with the bartenders too that's one of my favorite things if there's nice bartenders i will automatically love that bar do you have a favorite dump like a favorite dive bar oh yeah uh scarps uh scarpaces in mount washington it's like i literally um uh, moved into my apartment now i used to live across the street from it but I when I switched apartments, I had to be. That was one of my stipulations: is that I had to be close to that bar, like walking distance. Nice. Yeah. That's where I, we go every Wednesday because they have uh they have stand up comedy. So. Well, you saw you were at the Pod Crawl. We have like a wealth of really nice bars here in Millville. <laughs> Yes. So I'm kind of spoiled because I can walk to all of them, and then I can literally walk across the bridge to to Lawrenceville, and they've got a a few good places over there as well. So um, yeah, it's you the, are spoiled. Yes. I, yeah, I think the bar scene in Pittsburgh's pretty good, with the yes, exception of I a totally few cranky old men who need to just you know zip it. Yes. So see, I the, you know old old men kind of act a little differently towards me. So I have True. different experiences. They have different experiences. <laughs> yes, you've got the. Uh, the uh, the old man catcallers, as I've uh, heard on yes. the the Mike Sasson show. So yeah, usually if I ever go if I ever go to the any bars around me by myself, like any dive bars, that's when I get the old guys coming up and talking to me, and I'm like, I you're a nice person, you know, but I, so, that's not really what I want to do here. So here's what we need to do: a, a social experiment. I have an idea. Okay. I I swore I would never go back to this particular bar during the daytime. I'll, I'll go there back in the evenings, but not in the daytime. Um, but I think maybe I should go back and I should bring you and you should just swear like a sailor and see maybe if this Maybe you man... shouldn't even been, be there though. Yeah, I that works. Like the okay. experiment would work better. I'll put in like I, a camera or something so that way I can like watch remotely and yes. uh, maybe we'll put it up on like the River's Edge live page so people can watch <laughs> and you just go in there and like swear like a, tra- like a, like a trucker or a sailor and see if this man like starts – but, 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 but malfunctioning and, and see if like his head explodes from confusion because, oh my God, yeah. women swear. <laughs> that's no a thing. Yeah, that's a thing. So, all right, Alex, yeah. I appreciate it. I look forward to uh, hearing you tomorrow, same time, yeah. 10 a.m., same channel, riversedgepgh.com, uh, powered yeah. by NJL Web Tech. All righty, thanks, Brian. All right, thank you. It's Alex Clements. Right. You can hear her tomorrow, 10 a.m at riversedgepgh.com. Uh, let's bring in the weird news. So I'm so sick of this election and I cannot wait for it to be over. It is so obnoxious, but Some people just can't get enough, and uh, one person liked it so much, he paired Hillary and Donald 
with Pokemon Go. It's called Hillary Donald Go. And you can basically play the Pokemon Go game, but all of the Pokemon are replaced with Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. And let me tell you, the, the game, it's going to be huge. Um, but seriously, what a dumb idea. Like, who wants to see that? People are probably actually downloading this like crazy. Like crazy. I guarantee you people are going to be downloading this game. Uh, really, really stupid. He's, well, I like this quote. He says he wants to inject some lighthearted humor and competition into the election season. So I think it is good to lighten things up a little bit. But I don't want... I hate both of these candidates. I just, I, I just want to go into a tunnel, hide and cry, cry in the tunnel, because, ugh, we're screwed, we're screwed, we're screwed. The next four to eight years are going to be really, 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 really depressing. The post office came out with a survey, by the way. I don't know if you heard this, but they claim, by the results of this survey, and, and I'm, I guess I can't deny it because I haven't... You know, I haven't seen the, the actual numbers, but they're, they're running an ad on Twitter that millennials are more likely, statistically, to read political mail and discuss it with friends. I don't get that. Why in the hell would you... Why would you do that? I don't know. Like, like I get the political mail and I throw it away. As I said in a previous show, if you think Donald Trump is going to release some political propaganda and be honest about the way he treats and views women where you think Hillary is going to be up front and square with you on the email situation, you're out of your mind. Get real people. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm a millennial and most of my friends are millennials and I don't know a single person who reads this election mail, this political mail, I should say. And I used to be very involved in politics. I used to be the executive director of the Republican committee out in Westmoreland County. I work for the State House of Representatives. I'm a former council member. I've got a background. I wouldn't read this crap. I wouldn't discuss this crap with my friends. None of my friends want to discuss it with me, and they know I have an interest, and they know that I kind of know what I'm talking about. So... Uh, if I'm not hearing it, if I'm not talking about it, I can't imagine anyone else is. Are they? I just, I, I don't know. I just can't imagine why. Who knows? Uh, today, our holiday of the day, is National Sunday School Teacher Appreciation Day. That's one of them. And I did want to, to actually talk about that because NGL Web Tech, the, the group that built the website that I was talking about earlier... I met them through my Sunday school teacher. It's actually uh, Nick's mother, so, um, and it was an adult Sunday school class, actually. But, uh, yeah, so there was an interesting connection there. So uh, Sunday school teacher appreciation day, special place in my heart. Uh, what else? Today is also, and this is kind of interesting. Today is actually, uh, speaking of bar etiquette and speaking of dealing with the Pennsylvania driver's license, ugh. Today is National Liquor Day, so uh, I may leave today's show and get myself a drink. So uh, that'll be coming up. Oh, and it's just announced, by the way. I'm still working on the committee, but I, I guess I'll announce it now. Drum roll. We are going to be doing live election coverage from Cousins Lounge on Election Day at 8 p.m. So uh, we'll get you more information as it comes out, as to who's on the panel and what to check out, but uh, definitely stay tuned for that. That's going to be lots of fun. We're going to be at the bar. We're going to be taking Yinzer commentary from the Barflies in the room and get their thoughts on who should win, who they're voting for, their thoughts after the election is over. And uh, a lot of you are going to listen, and you're going to get really, really pissed because some of them are going to be Trump supporters, and some of them are, gonna, are going to be Hillary supporters, and no matter who they support, someone's going to be pissed. So listen in and be pissed with me because whoever wins know that I'm going to be pissed. So, But we have uh, some interesting people. We're going to have uh, – let me see. Who are we going to have? We're going to have Mike McMullen, as you would probably imagine. We're going to have Aaron Watson. 
uh, going deep with Aaron Watson. He's got a political science background, and he's not voted for anyone, so I'm interested to have him on the group. And we're going to be trying to add a few other people, possibly Sean Logue, who I mentioned for uh, his birthday being today. And I hope that Sean has a party, and I hope he hires a clown, because the clowns are having a hard time with all of the the crazy killer clowns that are going around. So hire a clown and, and spread some some clown love, would ya? Just spread some clown love. But it's sad to say it is 11 o'clock. And that means I am about to get a drink. And then, uh, you know, I may not go to bed. Tonight's my night off, so maybe I'll just stay up and, and party. But regardless, I'm out of here. I'm off. So uh, I'm going to put together, we have a new uh, Pittsburgh Backstage that'll be coming out. Don't forget to check out the Culture Cruise and listen the whole way through to find the catchphrase to get your free, that's right, f f f free tickets to Scarehouse, the Scarehouse Pittsburgh. And uh, also don't forget, Steel City Comedy Tour, support animals, October the 22nd, Saturday, doors open at 6.30, dinner at 7, showtime at 8.15, it's going to be at the Paintertown Volunteer Fire Department. I used to, have, actually, I used to be a member of Level Green Fire Department, which wasn't uh, far down the road from Paintertown. But uh, tickets are $30. They've got uh, soft drinks, draft beer, uh, cash bar, 50-50, Chinese auction, all sorts of good stuff. You can call 412-760-8418. That's seven, uh, 412. Again, on the spot getting this information 412-760-8418 or uh you can paypal donate at pawsacrosspittsburgh.com uh, my friend brad ryan is involved mike wick you've heard him before on this program chuck krieger and uh, brad is a big animal rights advocate we had him on to talk about the michael vick situation before so uh good stuff there don't forget to tune in tomorrow 10 a.m for mike sasson i'll catch you on Wednesday.